Ryan Gosling. Claire Foy. Kyle Chandler. Corey Stoll. Olivia Hamilton. Patrick Fugit. Writer Josh Singer. And James R. Hansen. Thank you, and I just wanted to bring out uh, just a few uh, uh, other people who, uh, without whom we wouldn't have been able to make the movie. First off, um, someone who knows firsthand what it's like to travel to the moon, Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden, our technical consultant. And uh, uh, the daughter of uh, Pat and Ed White, who's, who you saw in the movie, Bonnie Bear. And finally, uh, two boys who about 50 years ago watched their dad become the first man on the moon, Rick and Mark Armstrong. Congratulations, everybody, really. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, it really is amazing to have you all here. Um, I'd like to ask you, Damien, uh, I see as a through line in your work a bit of a theme of the cost of our dreams. And I think that really resonated here for me, not just the cost to Neil Armstrong personally, but to his family and to society as a whole. Can you talk a little bit about the, the perspective that you took with telling this story in maybe a bit of an unexpected way? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, in some ways that was what uh, interested me the most in it was trying to, you know, take an event that's so famous, it's almost mythological, uh, the, the, you know, the Apollo 11 landing on the moon, and then try to peel back the mythology and look at what actually uh, happened at a practical level, at a human level, what went into that event. Um, and I think one thing that... Uh, that uh, I really found so kind of profoundly uh, communicated in uh, uh, Jim Hansen's book um, right away and that Josh kind of found more and more of in his research was just over and over again examples of how hard this was. And, and it, it seems like it goes without saying, but I actually think with an event that's so gilded and in, uh, you know, sometimes nostalgia and a sort of success story aura as the moon landing, it's actually easy today to forget um, how insane it seemed at times, how unlikely uh, the lives it, it, it cost, the money, the families it put burdens on. Um, it was just this insane ordeal that I think uh, we still haven't fully fathomed in some way uh, as a world. So um, I think that was the impulse for all of us was really to just try through the research and through telling the story to try to get at the grit of that and show, not sugarcoat it, show really every step of the way through Neil's eyes and Janet's eyes how hard it was. Uh, it's, it's such an epic event and an epic story that you're telling, but it's done in such an intimate, beautiful way. I'm wondering if I can ask of the cast both how you achieved that, both on the family side of things and then also on the professional side of things with the astronauts. <laughs> Achieving intimacy. Go. Um, I'll do family, because I'm not an astronaut in the film. Um, <laughs> We, Damien did this amazing thing where we had two weeks uh, before we started proper principal photography, uh, where we had all the costumes and all the sets to ourselves, and him and uh, Linus, who's the DOP, the amazing DOP, and um, Ryan and me and the kids just sort of lived together for a bit. Um, not all day, every day. That would have been too much. Um, <laughs> but we... Uh, 
we sort of became a family. Just from starting, we did, all day we just spent with the kids, just sort of trying to entertain them and get to know them. And then so when we came to the first day of shooting, it felt like we'd known each other for such a long time. And, and I think that was invaluable, really. Um, and so we never really had to have those chats that you'd have, which was where you didn't really know, because we'd lived it really a bit, which really helped. Astronauts. Uh, he's an astronaut. You're an astronaut. <laughs> You guys want to answer the Come on, astronauts. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, maybe the real astronauts I want to talk about yeah, intimacy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I, the, everything was handheld, and you know, Linus was, I feel like, you know, as much a part of the cast as, as anybody. And, and you really felt on, from the, the, the first day that I was on set um, that there was something different. I almost felt like I was in an Alden movie. Um, my first day, because there was this day where we were, it was uh, um, the, uh, the funeral uh, for, 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 for C, Elliot C, and uh, there was a part of the uh, funeral happening in one room, you guys were in there, and, and there was another part uh, happening out in the day room, and it was all happening simultaneously. It was, it was almost like a, like a documentary. It was really, uh, I think everybody, as soon as they uh, showed up on set, realized there was this was different. Um, I'm wondering, Damien, if you can speak a little bit about some of the craft in the film. The sound design uh, is incredible to to hear when you're watching the film. It feels, you know, there's such stark contrast between the loud noises of the rocket and also the silence of the moon landing. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how you tried to create that authenticity. Uh, well, I mean, I, I was, you know, uh, uh, insanely lucky to have um, uh, the uh, the collaborators that I did. I mean, on, on when it came to sound, I, it was uh, I worked with uh, uh, two people who I'd worked with before in La La Land, Eileen Lee and and Millie Yatru Morgan, uh, and then two new people, uh, people I hadn't worked with before, John Taylor and Frank Montano, and they, all four of them, just uh, you know, in, in a way, this was sort of uh, an example you know, that was kind of repeated across departments, you know, right from the get-go, um, they went to the Cape to record Falcon X launches and, and record, uh, you know, sort of immediate sounds of any launches that they could get their hands on, as well as trying to pour over the archival of Saturn V launches and Titan launches. Um, they, they sort of got access to all the actual spacesuits uh, that, um, that the, you know, the, the, the astronauts in the film played uh, from X-15 space, uh, X-15 suits to Gemini suits to, uh, 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 to the suit that uh, John Young, not Neil, but John Young wore uh, on the moon um, and sort of put mics in the helmets and got sounds from every single valve and piece of the suit. Um, and they were doing all of that while we were actually shooting and still cutting the movie. Um, and then the mix was its own kind of uh, sort of process of discovery of trying to sort of find out um, where to lean into that realism and then where to, you know, where to veer away from it. Um, so, you know, your average launch here has, it's, it, you know, I'd say like a good contention of it is real sounds that you would hear from the rocket, but then you also want to try to get that emotional gut punch and, and, and add to that and augment that. Um, Tell them about the horses. So, so that, well, you know, so you throw in, uh, I found horses can be quite helpful. Um, uh, uh, the sound of stampeding horses is very useful. Uh, lines roaring. Um, I think there's a hippopotamus in there somewhere. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a whole menagerie. So, you know, rocket launches and zoos are the, really the real key, <laughs> sound-wise. Um, I'm curious, uh, Al Warden, if you don't mind uh, taking a question. Um, you've been to the moon, uh, and this <laughs> is, that's incredible. What? What? So I'm, I'm wondering what this experience of watching this film is like for you, and you know, did he get it right? Um, I, think, I think Josh did a wonderful job of writing a script for this book that my friend Jim wrote. Uh, but you see, I see there's a, there's a huge thing of transferring a book to a movie. I think in a book you can say somebody does a certain action, but when you do it with the movie, you got to show what that action is, and you got to show how they're going to get along the way. Uh, so, anyway, hopefully it was a little help. I think it's a fabulous movie. Um, I have watched lots and lots of science fiction movies, and I don't like any of them. Uh, because 
there's always a falsehood in every single science fiction movie, and particularly those science fiction movies that pretend to be real space kind of movies, like Gravity, which is the, probably the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so it's not only great, but it's very refreshing that we have a movie here that focuses on the people involved, the man involved, and what he did, and how he got to where he's gonna go. Now, I'm gonna close off by saying, that, you know, there's just one wish. Um, see, I relate more to space cowboys than I do to these people. <laughs> if anybody has seen the movie, uh, that's where they take 80-year-old astronauts and fly them into space again, and I'm all set to go. <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Um. <laughs> I'm wondering if, uh, Ryan, you could maybe talk a little bit about what it was like to... <laughs> you gotta let me get one in. Um, if you could talk a bit about what it was like to work with Rick and Mark and anybody else that you kind of spoke to to help prepare for this role. I can't follow that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I've never had more help on a film than I had on this film. Um, Damien surrounded us with um, yeah, everything you could need. Uh, for instance, I mean, we, uh, if you could need anything more than Al, I don't know. But, you know, Al was on set when we were uh, working in the Apollo missions. Uh, Jim was on set every day. Um, you know, Frank Borman was there when we were uh, working on the Gemini missions. Uh, Joe Engel came for the X-15 portion. There was always uh, somebody there who had direct experience with the missions um, to talk to you, not only about the technical aspects, but but how it felt, what might be going through your mind, looking out the window at any given moment. Um, it was extremely helpful, but, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge of this film was knowing that, uh, you know, uh, Rick and Mark were gonna see this film when it was over, that they were not just seeing a movie, they were seeing a film about their mom and dad, and uh, it was ex extraordinary uh, responsibility to, to try and portray that. And they were extremely um, helpful, always available. Um, you know, Claire and I had to try and imagine certain, you know, moments behind closed doors that may have happened between uh, Neil and Janet. And you know, we 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 did the best that we could. But had we not had the the blessing of Rick and Mark, and also the uh, you know the the details that they shared with us, the. Uh, um, trying to, uh, you know, the, the legacy of their parents is so important to them. It's, it's, uh, I, I, f I felt how important it was that we get it right. And, uh, and I really, um, I really admired their, uh, how fiercely they, they, they um, guarded the, their parents' legacy. And it means everything that they're here tonight. I'd like to actually ask a question of Rick and Mark, um, and maybe Bonnie, you as well, um, and what this experience has been like for you. I know that some of you collaborated very closely with the project and producers and Josh and Damien, and if you could talk a little bit about what this all means and what your experience has been like. <coughs> you ready to take that first? Yeah. Let Bonnie start. <laughs> Will she pass it yeah. to me? <laughs> pass it to you. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, so, I've often been asked, uh, what was it like to be the son of the first man on the moon? And, um, and the truth is that this movie answers that question. We were, uh, we, were, we, were um, we were an ordinary American family thrust into extraordinary circumstances. Thank you. And the, the tragedies that transpired along the way, I think, only made our mother and father 
and the, and the hundreds of thousands of others dig that much deeper to make sure that those sacrifices were not in vain. Uh, just one other thing. Um, you, you may not be aware, but we, we lost our mother, Janet, to, uh, to lung cancer less than three months ago. And those feelings are still quite raw, as you might imagine. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the filmmakers and to thank, in particular, Claire. It's a, it's a beautiful portrayal, it's a wonderful memorial tribute, and it's better than any eulogy I could ever write. Uh, one thing you can definitely say about Dad is he was a stickler for accuracy. <laughs> so when we uh, were first thinking about whether or not to get involved with this film, uh, we had some discussions with Josh and, and, and then with Damien to try to find out what approach they were gonna take and was this important to them? Was accuracy important? And, and we came away from that feeling like it was. And uh, they went so far beyond what I ever expected in the, in the whole production of this film uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about. Uh, you know, our, our choice to, to uh, try to help because I feel like, I feel like we uh, contributed a little bit and uh, they took it and ran with it and, and you got to see what the result was. Um, Josh, I'd like to go to you now. This, was, this is your script, um, and I'm wondering if you can talk a bit about what it was like for you to tackle such an amazing story. Uh, well, I think when you try to take on a story like this, you feel a lot of responsibility to try to get it right. And fortunately, uh, Jim wrote an amazing book, and Jim not only gave me the book, but he gave me his time over and over uh, uh, and introduced me to everyone who I could possibly want to talk to, from Gene Matranga, uh, who was the engineer with Neil uh, working on the X-15, uh, to these great folks, uh, to Mike Collins and Buzz Aldrin and all sorts of other astronauts and Al. Um, and, uh, you know, fortunately, as Ryan said, you know, I've never had more help between the people behind uh, who, who knew the actual facts and then Damien and Ryan and the rest of the cast. I mean, this was a collaborative process. Damien and I have been burnishing this script for three years now. And, uh, and Ryan came in, you know, two years ago. And, and some of the best, some of my favorite scene in the piece is probably the edge lock scene about musical theater. <laughs> and, uh, and that wasn't in the initial script. And Ryan said, Neil, like musical theater? Why isn't that in the movie? And I said, I, I don't know. And I, 10 minutes, wrote a scene, and it's one of my favorites. So that's how it works. Uh, Damien, maybe just one last question for you. Um, it's such an incredible technical achievement and artistic achievement, and we, uh, you guys have all talked a lot about the collaborative process, but I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about either maybe what was the most challenging thing that you had to do or scene you had to film here or the most enjoyable or memorable. Uh, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I mean, just the, the learning curve in general uh, uh, was uh, just a challenge unlike any I've uh, tried to tackle, and I remember the first time that I went to Houston myself, it was sort of, um, you know, it was kind of, you go to NASA and you go and speak to the actual, uh, uh, some of the, you know, flight controllers and, and former astronauts there, and it was just uh, this immediate visceral reminder of just how hard this was going to be. Um, but, uh, but I think, um, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I, I think in some ways the, uh, the hardest thing for us specifically when shooting was really, uh, you know, we, we had gone into a groove, uh, especially with so much of the family stuff of shooting this kind of 
near documentary style and shooting in a very fluid way. And then at a certain point, we shifted after a few months of that kind of shooting to shooting spacecrafts and trying to shoot the moon. Um, and suddenly, you know, the technicalities, the, the machinery, because uh, we wanted to do stuff in camera as much as possible, it, it, suddenly we were fighting this fight to try to keep the fluidity, keep the spontaneity of documentary alive with, uh, yeah, I mean, Ryan and Corey can tell you horror stories of these spacesuits and, uh, 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 and, and us trying to shoot with them. And I'm sure, you know, Al has his fair share of horror, <laughs> horror stories too of actually having to wear these things and, and uh, 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 shooting in, you know, scale replicas of these crafts, which are not big, um, and uh, shooting against LED screens and trying to kind of capture all the imagery and camera with gimbals and whatnot. Um, uh, I think the whole shooting felt like it ground to a halt for about a few days or so, and we had to kind of figure out this new language of how to, how to do that um, and, and figure out how to kind of inject some kind of realism into that as well. So I think trying to bridge that gap and make those feel like the same movie, uh, especially through the shooting process, was maybe the most challenging, and trying not to suffocate Corey and, and Ryan in their spacesuits would be an added challenge. Well, I think you rose to the challenge. Uh, this yeah, is incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you all for staying.